All right, so Zoom rolled out a few updates in their app, and I just want to show you a few of my favorite features. The first one is the nonverbal feedback buttons under the reactions now stay up, so you can do nice impromptu voting and polls. The second thing is you now can blur your background in Zoom uh, just in case there's anything happening behind you that you don't want people to see. And the third thing that is actually my favorite new feature is Zoom now has free live captions. So you don't need to use a third party tool anymore. They made it free for all their uh, paid users. And I will show you exactly how to set that up and how to enable that. But first, let's talk about how you can make sure that you have your app up to date. So um, let me share my screen real quick. Uh, this is the Zoom app that you probably are familiar with. And if you're on a Mac computer, you can go to the top left menu and then just find this check for updates over here. Uh, if you click it and you are up to date, it will actually tell you if you have an update that is ready to install, you can just click install right here. And if you're on a Windows computer or if for some reason you can't find that, you can always find your little thumbnail on the top right of the app, you click that, and there should again be a check for updates option. Uh, same thing, this way it will tell you if you are on the most recent version, which currently is 5.5.1, today is February 5th. This update came out um, two or three days ago. So let's go back to uh, Zoom for a second. So uh, hold on, here we go. Um, the first thing I want to show you is the reactions button, which you can see at the bottom over here. This is where in the previous version, they added the raise hand button, but they also moved all of the nonverbal feedback buttons over there. So let me quickly zoom in a little bit closer to that button so we can have a look. Uh, actually, before I zoom in, this is what it looks like, but now let's zoom in a bit. Um, so here we have on the top our general emojis, the clap, thumbs up, the hearts, the laughing face, the surprised face, and the, the party, ta-da. Um, and then on the second row, we have all of these nonverbal feedback buttons, which is a yes, no, a slow down, and speed up. Uh, and then we have our raise hand. So I will go back to the bigger view so you can see what happens when you when I press that. So the emojis, the reactions, you know, will show up in the top left corner of your screen. And they also work if anybody has their video off, which is really great uh, way to engage when you're working with students and maybe they can't or don't want to turn on their camera. If you ask them to use the reactions buttons, they're still visible on the gallery view in the little video thumbnail. Um, but as you can see, all of those little uh, reactions disappear after about 10, 15 seconds. So let's talk about the nonverbal feedback, the yes, no. Um, they used to disappear as well until this recent update from this week. Now they stay up until um, either the person who put it up uh, clicks it again and it disappears, or the host uh, removes all of the nonverbal feedback. And I'll actually show you, uh, let's say, let's just say slow down as one of them. Um, if I click down here to the participants panel, you can now see that, first of all, next to my name, it shows the little uh, slow down um, icon but also on the bottom here, it will tabulate all of the votes. So if you are just doing a quick yes, no uh, survey and uh, wanna see how many yeses, how many nos you get, it actually will show you with a little number next to the symbol. Okay, you got five yeses and 20 nos. So you have a way to actually do that survey and you don't have to worry about the, um, the icon disappearing right away. So this is one really cool feature that uh, Zoom has now changed. So we can use that to engage with our audience. Um, the next thing that I would love to show you is the blurring your background. And um, 
I'm just going to close this again. If you go to the place where you usually turn on your virtual backgrounds, which is uh, the fastest way to find it is click that little arrow next to start video and then select choose virtual background. And you can see me actually right now in my other camera. This is the camera for my laptop. I'm using a DSLR camera over here. And the very first option next to none is now blur. And when you click that, what it does, it uses the same technology to figure out, okay, what's the foreground? Where, where is the person? And then blurs everything in the background. Something that I think will become super handy because as you can see, I'm sharing my office with my son and sometimes he needs to get a diaper changed while I'm in the middle of something. And maybe I could just turn on the blur filter for a, a couple of minutes and that way stuff's happening in the background. Nobody can see it. They just see some shapes moving back here. And then uh, when we're done, we can continue. Unfortunately, what I was hoping for, and this is the, the tricky thing with just the technology not being so good, of recognizing what is the foreground, what is the background. Like you can see if you still like move your hands really fast, it's not a green screen. So um, it's not necessarily going to help you improve your image quality the same way it would do if um, like what I'm doing here is using a very expensive webcam that automatically, sorry, very expensive camera, which is a DSLR camera that blurs the background just by the way the camera lens works. So those are the first two features that have been introduced this week. And then I'm actually not sure when they did this, but uh, now the third thing and the thing that I'm actually really excited about is you can do live transcripts, live captions within Zoom without having to pay for any extra uh, third party service. And I will show you First of all, um, on the bottom of your menu, if you're the host, you will see this button that says live transcript. If you don't see this, which means uh, you actually have to enable it in the website first. So let's have a quick look at where you enable this and then I will show you how it works. Um, all right, one second, we need to switch some screens. All right, now we are in the uh, on the Zoom website. And if you go to the settings tab on the left side, this is where you will find all the settings for your Zoom account. And the fastest way I like to use this page to move around is just hit Command or Control F, or, which will bring up the little search menu in your browser. And that will just speed up anything that you need to find. So I'm just going to write in caption. And here we go. We found the closed captioning, which uh, that needs to be turned on. And now there's a new checkbox down here that says enable live transcription service to show transcript on the side panel in meeting. So if both of these things are turned on, and I assume that you also want to save them, next one, uh, just in case, uh, and you can allow participants to save them as well. Um, after this is all turned on and you start a new meeting, let's go back here, um, then you will have this live transcript button down here. And when we click that, you can still do the things that you were uh, able to do previously, like assign someone to type it, which is great if you have an interpreter that might type in a different language. Um, you can still use the third party service and copy the token and have another video where I show you how to set that up. But that's not necessary anymore in my opinion. Now you can just enable the auto transcription. And uh, once I click this button, it just says you have turned on live um, uh, transcription, transcription. And I will just uh, talk for a little bit for it to pick up what I'm saying. And we'll see how it does. You can also if and this is what everybody will see here, they can hide the subtitles, they can view the full transcript, and they can also change some of the settings. So let's have a quick look at the settings. So this is actually hidden in the accessibility part of your Zoom settings. And here, every participant can choose 
uh, kind of the size of the, uh, how large they want the captions to look like. Um, and yeah, I think that's, that's about it that you can choose, uh, just the size. And uh, let's close this again. And let's see if this is actually working. Let's have a look at the transcript. Okay, this is like the the test. I'm like, it worked a minute ago and now it's not working. So maybe this is still something. Maybe that's why they haven't announced it publicly yet because it's still a bit buggy. Let's turn it off again. Let's turn it on again. You have turned on live transcription. Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear what I am saying? Oh, of course. I know why it's not transcribing anything because I had the mute button enabled in Zoom. So of course it's not going to pick up anything. So now you can see the captions are coming in. It actually is way more accurate than some of the third party services that I've used and also a lot faster. As you can see, it's only like half a sentence behind. And let's have a look at the transcript again, because that's another cool thing. It actually shows, as you can see, who is speaking. So if there was another person here that then would uh, continue with the conversation, it would show up with their little name and thumbnail, and then just continue. It also gives you the time codes, which is great. Um, the one thing I've noticed is if you have several people talking at the same time and you talk over each other or you interrupt each other, Zoom doesn't really know who's speaking. So sometimes the like the person is not 100% accurate. But if you're looking at the um, kind of the results that we're getting, the things that I'm saying that is picking up, I'm not talking slowly. I have a little bit of a German accent, but it actually is really, really good. And not only will this make your virtual experiences, workshops, meetings more accessible for anybody who's hard of hearing, but also what a great way to save the transcript at the end of a meeting and uh, upload it as a captions file with your videos or make it searchable. So when you're creating a library of content, people can actually search and find what was talked about in that meeting. Or you can quickly go through the transcript and search, okay, where did when did we talk about this section? Let me review that. Oh, it was at 11, 58 and 17 seconds. Um, okay, let's scrub to that part of the video and watch that again. So those are the three things that uh, Zoom has updated this week that I am really excited about and just wanted to share the great news. If you're interested in learning more about how to use Zoom to especially facilitate meaningful, magical experiences that uh, bring people together and um, are just memorable and stand out from what everybody else is doing, I have a virtual facilitator training and I also am putting together a just Zoom um, tech self-guided course on how to use Zoom's features to uh, lead these group learning experiences online. So I'll put all the details in the description. And if you enjoy this video, if you got any value from it, give it a like, uh, hit subscribe. Hold on, I have a subscribe button somewhere. Um, haven't used this in a while. Here we go. Uh, hit like, hit subscribe, and let me know what other topics you would like me to cover when it comes to facilitating and creating meaningful experiences on Zoom. Bye.